Andrew, pre-season's underway. The boys have been in a couple of weeks working hard. Have you had a chance to catch up with the coaches and the players to see how things are going? Yeah, it's been pretty busy being away from here, but the days I have gone over, um, there's a real bubble and energy about the place with this young group. So, no, it's been fantastic. And, and seeing these new faces as a vibrancy, uh, the changes in the management as well, as, um, there's a real energy about the place, which is, which is fantastic. Pre-season is always a time where all teams are optimistic about what lies ahead. But what are your hopes for the season for the Ospreys? Well, I think no, this year it's been really exciting. We've been able to retain talent such as Ellen Jones and, and, and obviously Tips is here, Dan Bigger, etc. But we've got this mix of, of special kids. I mean, if you look at the hooking stakes, everyone was probably dipped down the mouth when Hibs left. Um, but the reason we were able to do that was largely that Sam Perry come knocking and wanted to come here. Uh, he's been in training with the Welsh team. You've got Baldwin who come come away with some real plaudits from the South African tour. And then you've got young Scott Hotton who was away with the 20s. So if you take that as an example, um, mixed with the, the guys that we've gone out to deliberately to keep here, um, we're building something pretty good. And um, so, you know, we'd be mildly optimistic of going, go, you know, going a long, long way. You talk about the new faces. Obviously there's not perhaps the household names that some people are saying that they want to see at the Ospreys, uh, but it's boys who are the right fit for the for the region and for the club and that the coaches have worked hard to try and identify. Yeah, well, look, one thing I will say about Steve, at least you know what he wants, and so we've, that makes recruitment so much easier. It's very similar to what I was used to at Canterbury and, and with the NZAU. Uh, they were clear on what the way they wanted to play the game and they recruited. Now, that doesn't always mean that you buy popular, um, and I think we've been guilty in the past of buying a name thinking that they were going to do something. Now, would you want some of those names? Yeah, definitely. You, you know, and, but we, once we build the financial base again around this young side, I think we'll be in a position to do that. But uh, no, look, with regard to, you know, Tandy knows what he wants. Um, we've gone out, we're looking for guys who will basically die on the field for this region. Uh, and I think anyone who watched us last year, even the people we did bring in, such as the Jeff Hasslers of this world, um, that were foreign, you know, you couldn't hold him back and he became a real crowd pleaser. So we're going to have to continue with this un under the radar type recruitment. I think if, even if you went and, you know, said in Canterbury outside of Kieran Reid, McCaw and uh, Carter, who, who was in the team, you wouldn't be able to name too many. And that's because the entity is bigger than any one individual. And I think this, uh, the Ospreys have, have crossed, crossed that line now and they understand that everyone's here has just got to give everything they can for this organisation and for this region. And uh, we recruit accordingly with those kind of individuals. The financial situation in Welsh rugby in general has been well documented over the last couple of years and obviously that plays a part in the recruitment and what we're doing with players moving and players coming, players stay in. Um, but it doesn't tell the full story because the full story is that Galacticals and big money doesn't always guarantee success. No, it didn't. Um, you know, you don't want to take anything away from the contribution that those people made. And as I said, as we build the commercial base, it's quite. I find it really ironic. You know, here we are ploughing an inordinate amount of money into the development to develop local talent. Yet you get criticised for not bringing in foreign talent. Um, and I think people have thought. You know, I've seen the the Tyler Ardrons, the um, the togas of this world do, do, do contribute uh, significantly and, and you can't take away from the fact that we do need to uh, bring this, let this young team come through and, and I have no doubt that there's a high probability that they'll eclipse what, whatever we've done in the past um, and we just need to give it time and let these people bet in. Now, if the opportunity arises that we can uh, grow our commercial base in the same way the French have with their 70 odd million TV deal then would you supplement that with a couple more experienced players? Yes, you would. What's happening right now, though, is our first goal is to keep the Alan Wynne Joneses, the Dan Biggers, uh, the Ashley Becks of this world in this region, and then start investing to make sure that the Adam Beards um, of this world, who are people that people don't even know, uh, who's a, an amazing talent, just one example of, that we give him everything he can to be the best that he can be. And that then they can go on and make sure that uh, that black shirt with, with that mask on it stays uh, where it is, which is one of the top brands in the world. At the end of the day, we are in the top 20 of Europe, and that's where we want to be uh, year in, year out. Um, and, you know, we want to, you know, the, we've got a lot of ambition to keep, you know, we haven't lost to Welsh life over the last two years. Uh, and I don't want that to become a burden 
but it's, it shows that we must be doing something right. There's a hidden side of recruitment and retention that perhaps people don't fully appreciate it. Yes, we've had to lose a few players, but we've announced 14 players in 2014 are staying at the Ospreys, and all of them are going to be on more money than they were before they signed the new contract. So people don't realise that you are spending more to keep the players here. Yeah, I think um, that's, that's very, very true. And not only that, you've got the young ones coming through, um, and as they grow and develop, you, you know, you, that bottleneck just becomes bigger and bigger. But those people still want to be rewarded for the time and effort that they're, that they're putting in. Um, and there's been an exponential boom um, in player salaries. Um, you can't get away from that. Uh, that's the market we're in, and we need to respect that. So it's going to get harder and harder for everybody. And I think if you look right around Welsh rugby, it's, it's exactly the same. So we need to work harder at building this commercial base with this young team. Every pound that when someone buys a season ticket uh, or a ticket to this match goes back in to the Osprey organisation, largely rugby. Of course you've got your, your, your administration arm, etc. But it's reinvested back into the business um, to produce more local talent and try to keep that local talent here. And that's important because one thing you've spoken about since you arrived in 2008 and the Ospreys are living it is development from within and sustainable success and the two go hand in hand. Yeah, they do. Um, and so we've just got to keep, we're not going to stray away. People know what we are. Um, I think we've been very honest with them and upfront on what, what we want to be. And I think because we've got a strong identity, that helps maintain our success, um, particularly amongst the Welsh regions. Um, and it's something we, we pride ourselves on a lot. Something that is respected, like Johnny Claxton, we brought him over from Leinster. You know, he, he, he was commenting just the other day just about um, the fact that you know, the Ospreys are respected across there for what they've done and what they've achieved. And that, that doesn't just happen recently, that's something that's built over the 10 years history of, of, of the region. And it's our job to make sure that we enhance that and make it even better and, and give it even stronger foundations for the many more years to come. And you've talked about growing the commercial base. The last few months we've had the announcement of the Rugby Champions Cup, BT Sport coming aboard, that all gives mm. regional rugby in, in Wales, the Ospreys, a financial boost. But there's a lot of work still to be done to get to where we need to be to compete at the highest level. Yeah, well, the next stage is, what, you know, obviously we've got to sign an agreement with uh, our governing body, but then we've got to work hard on the Rabo. And I think the changes that have happened with Europe, meaning that, you know, you've got to qualify from the league, et cetera, et cetera, make that a far more exciting proposition. So now we've got to re probably readdress um, some of the commercial decisions that are being done there. We've got to, and we've got to make that league into something special that people want to invest in. So we're going to work hard on that and we're going to give it everything we can along with our other regional partners to make sure uh, that we can do that because at the end of the day, as I said, that money gets reinvested into here in whatever shape or form to make us stronger. And finally, in summary, you're pretty positive about the future for the Ospreys? Yeah, very. Um, I think if you look at our, uh, the amount of national team players we have right across the board, I think um, the, the growth uh, of, our, of our staff and what we've done here, who are all passionate about um, this entity and what it means and, and, and the club as a whole, um, I'm extremely passionate. I think you know, the fact that Alan Wynn re-signed this year is a great vote of confidence. Uh, the fact that Adam's doing what he's doing, which is you know really wants to stay, um, shows that Steve and and the rest of the crew, uh, Andrew Millwood, are, are creating something special here that people want to be a part of, and I'm I'm, I'm delighted for them on that. Yeah.